everyone and welcome to my very first reading vlog so bear with me I hope this will turn out as well as I think and yes according to my shirt my weekend is booked because it is the Rory Gilmore 24-hour readathon now technically the readathon starts tomorrow on Saturday the 29th but I am here on the 28th because I don't enjoy staying up for 24 hours in a row. So according to the hosts, it's best to start the night before if you are not a night owl. And that way you can get some sleep, still put in the 24 hours. I have loved Gilmore Girls more and more going into my 20s especially as I live in a small town in Connecticut near where Amy Sherman Palladino based Stars Hollow. So I like to think that my town is the inspiration for Stars Hollow. It's not actually, but I like to think that. So I am hoping to get started in just a little bit. I just got home from work. Those of you who don't know, I'm a teacher. So during pandemic, that means coming home and taking a shower straight away. So I'm gonna get started uh, as per Gilmore Girls, my family has a tradition of having my best friend over every Friday for Friday night dinner. So he should be over in about half an hour, which means I can get in half an hour of reading time. My start for today is not a book listed on the Rory Gilmore Reading Challenge, because I need to finish it before I can move on to other books. And that book is Paddington's Finest Hour. This has been a super stressful week going back to work, so I'm hoping to finish this. It should be pretty easy. It's very small, short stories. And here I go. I'll let you know how I get on. I'm literally like the, the awkward camera that's like, Hi guys! <laughs> <laughs> Please do it. I mean, it's literally, it's it's. It's on, there, so I like, could use it. Yeah. <laughs> Jonathan's here! Hey guys! Yay! Yay! So I have left you all shamefully today because I've just been reading all day. So, I mean, Rory Gilmore readathon is to read as much as possible. So I'll fill you in on that in a moment. This is my friend Jonathan! Hello! He's joining me on the vlog. We have been friends for how long now? That's 20... You're better at counting and 20... math. <laughs> well, easily, easily it's 20 over years. 20. Yeah, over 20 years. It's That's over 20. Over, yeah, so two decades. Go yeah. us! Hey! Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 
So he actually joined me this morning, you will have seen that clip earlier, because in addition to being the Rory Gilmore 24 hour readathon and cozy reading night, today was also belated independent bookstore day here in the US. So we went down to our local independent bookstore and they had all sorts of sales going on and it was just so nice to be back in a bookstore. Yeah, that was a, that was yeah, that was my first time too. So yeah. that was just really quite it was it was different but in a good way. I felt comfortable, I felt safe, everyone mm -hmm. was kind, there was a lot of space. So yeah, really good experience overall. Great right. to be back. So we of course need to talk through what we've been reading and what we got. Yes. So which would you like to start with? Uh, let's start with the Bhopal. Okay, so we got a bunch of things. I picked up first of all because I'm also a stationary hoarder I and don't have you enough. Those up. Yeah, they were right oh, by the checkout. You, sneaky. you oh. told me to go look at the socks, and these were right by the socks. I did, but I totally thought you'd fall into a sock trap. So. <laughs> um, so I first picked up a set of five literary pencils that all ask what would various famous female authors write on them. So we have, let's see, what would Jane Austen write, Maya Angelou, Sylvia Plath, Dorothy Parker, or Emily Dickinson. Oh my god, can I see? Of course. Sorry, I'm gonna like interrupt with <laughs> being ahead. like the audience as well. Just, <laughs> this is so cool. You need to just like base your lifestyle as you're using these pencils, just like. Maybe not with Sylvia Plath though. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah, no, <laughs> listeners don't. Great writer. Um, bless. Just don't do that, so. But then I stumbled upon the other set of language pencils. So these pencils all say, write it down on paper in five different languages. Ooh, can I guess? Of course. Yes. Okay, So cool. we have English, obviously. Dang it, that, that's such a good word. Okay, cool. <laughs> all right, I see, écrivez le sur le papier, so that's uh -huh. French. Yes. Um, is escribelo, is that Spanish? Escribelo. Escribelo, mm -hmm. okay, cool. Um, uh, okay, so German. I'm not even going to tr try to pronounce that. Yeah. I, I see auf. That's, that strikes me as being either gonna, German or Germanic. Yeah, I'm going to say schreiben sie es auf. Okay. Papier? I don't, I don't yeah. know what to do with that. Okay. But, but yes, I would say that's German. Okay, and actually, scrivere su carta, is that... I would say I'm Portuguese or Latin, actually. No, neither. You're close, okay. though. All right. Also, it occurred to me the answers are right there. Loving so. those Latin roots. Um, all right. So we've already got French, Spanish, German. Mm -hmm. And it's not Portuguese. No, not that I know of. Su. Su. Italian? Yes. Oh, okay. That's slightly less esoteric. And let's just double check to make sure I'm not... Totally wrong. No, I'm not totally wrong. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Linguistics. Let's do it. Other things we got. These were free. These Read for Joy journals. Did you flip through? Which flip are them. so adorable. I gave it a quick flip through. So there are all sorts of articles and about reading and being a reader. And then it stops every now and again and there's a journal prompt for you to fill Ooh. out. Such okay. as, what was your favorite picture book as a child? What did you love about it? What do you remember about the illustrations and the words? And I suppose it would go through older books as, as you got older. And it just looks so adorable. Nice. Yeah, I didn't look through mine. I saw that it, there was space for writing, which is kind of exciting. So, mm -hmm. very nice. Yeah, so I haven't decided what to do with that. I'm thinking that might be a New Year's project. Nice, that's a good idea. I agree with that. So then we each picked up two books, yep. which is very restrained for us. So Super restrained. Normally right. we just buy the bookstore. We're like, <laughs> we own this now. We are the captain. It's the whole we'll thing. We'll take the lot. Yeah. <laughs> is it, dang it, I should have gotten there first. So the first book I picked up was The Jane Austen Society by Natalie Jenner, which, to be honest, I got kind of snobby about and avoided for a while, because I am, I read so much Jane Austen fiction and nonfiction. Jane Austen expert right here, don't let her be a shy. Thank you. But um, I've read so much that I can get really snobby about it and unfortunately judge books by their covers <laughs> and think that maybe this was going to be a bit more fluffy. But then I saw Natalie Jenner on a panel run by Pan McMillan, virtually of course, uh, the other week along with a couple other authors who had also written Austin-centric books for that same publisher. 
and it got me a lot more interested. I determined that it was not as fluffy as it sounded. Quite honestly, while we were in the bookstore, I was looking for, I think it's called Austin Years mm. by another member of that panel, which is a memoir about when she reread all of Jane Austen's novels yep. while she was A, pregnant, and B, grieving her father's death. Oh my gosh. Okay. And the effect that reading Austen yep. had throughout that period in her nice. life. Nice, okay. It sounds so amazing, but they didn't have it. Yep. But I had been convinced that this one could be worth a look as well, and I was just craving Austen so much that I went for it. Excellent. And then finally, I picked up, which I wasn't aware was even published in the US yet, so I'm very happy, Mary Toft or The Rabbit Queen by Dexter Palmer, which I know very little about, except that it's possibly based on a true story. Yes, Don't I did read on, on the sign in there underneath the book that it is based on the true story, okay. and to not look up the true story until you finish the book, because it'll give away oh. plot points or, or something like that. So okay. Good yeah. to know. Yeah. See, it was too tall, I couldn't read that. Ah, uh, see, you bring a tall friend to the bookstore, <laughs> what I'm here for. And many other things as well, please, oh. but, um, So yes, this is about Mary Toft, who lived sometime in the 18th century, and claimed to have given birth to rabbits. And so it's about her and the two doctors or scientists who investigate this case to see, did this actually happen? Was this physically possible? Is it witchcraft? Yes, Where it's witchcraft. Lie? That's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> you always want it to be witchcraft. It's because it always is witchcraft. I was <laughs> born and raised in New England, like it's always witchcraft. <laughs> yeah. So yes, that was my lovely haul. Please show us yours. Sweet. Uh, mm. Before I talk about my books, I thought I'd actually talk about this as well. Please this cool. Do. Um, so big Tolkien nerd over here. Love me some Lord of the Rings. Love me some Silmarillion. Um, so at the bookstore, uh, they just had some Lord of the Rings merch that they were giving as as part of I guess the sale, which is cool. Uh, we were trying to figure out earlier if this time of year is significant for any Tolkien slash Lord of the Rings reasons. I don't think we came up with any, but the fact that they're doing it now is great, so really excited about that. Um, so one of the things that they gave um, was this lovely um, map in black ink and kind of fuchsia of Middle Earth, um, which I've never really just owned a map of Middle Earth uh, outside of the books. This is the same illustration that's well known from the volumes themselves, so mm -hmm. um, just actually it's really exciting to have. Uh, I feel like I might even like frame this or something. I love the, the pink and black contrast. Right, right. Um, so yeah, it's just um, it's just really beautiful. Apparently this is published by um, HMH Books, which I'm not familiar at all with who they are, but that's going to change because they're clearly doing some really cool merchandise. So um, yeah, very cool stuff. So very happy to uh, get that. And uh, yeah, so that's that. On the topic of Tolkien, um, one of the books I read tonight, not part of the haul, but uh, is actually a gift I got from Heather. Um, the Letters of J.R.R. Tolkien, as comprised by, uh, edited, excuse me, by Humphrey Carpenter, with the assistance of J.R.R. Tolkien's son, uh, Christopher Tolkien. Uh, so yeah, started, a, uh, you know, about a month ago, I'm just taking it easy, but uh, really good so far. Love getting that insight into his mind and stuff like that. So back to the book haul, though. Um, so I got two books as well, very restrained, we did so well with our self-discipline. Um, one is The Stationery Shop by, and I don't officially know how to pronounce the name, but I believe it's Marjan Kamali. Um, it takes place in, uh, the majority of the action takes place in Tehran in apparently the 1950s. It basically focuses on the story of a uh, young man and young woman who fall in love, I'm assuming before the revolution, I know very little about Iranian history except that there was a revolution. Um, but uh, so it appears to be kind of a before and after where the love story happened before the revolution and uh, it looks like they reconnect somehow many years later afterwards once uh, it appears they're both in America. Um, so yeah, I came across this, I think last year, it was quite some time ago, I think maybe we even kind of counted it together in a right, bookstore. Right, I think it was when 
maybe the last time we were in New York. Yeah, like the Strand or something. Yeah. So okay. Um, so yeah, caught my eye. Uh, seems very promising. Love reading, you know, stories overseas or historical. Um, so just very excited to see how that goes. So that's the stationery shop. Um, th apparently they fell in love in a stationery shop. That's why it's important. So sorry to miss that. Um, it is before the revolution. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, Perfect. Revolution was in the seventies. Oh, excellent. I'm terrible at dates. So friend for history right here. I um, I can't stop. Won't stop. All right, cool. So the other book I got is Crossings by, um, Alex Landrigan. Uh, again, no... Uh, guarantees on pronunciation. Uh, so what's really cool about this, the thing that caught my eye besides um, the very, uh, you know, nice premise, uh, is that it can be read in more than one way. Apparently it can be read either as a first to last page narrative or by following an alternative chapter sequence. Not sure how the alternative chapter sequence works yet, uh, but apparently the action follows a bookbinder who finds that one of his clients is murdered. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess he determines that the books that he had bound for her are all in some way clues to the circumstances leading up to her murder. Um, and so reading through them, I guess it comprises like, you know, the bulk of the novel, but presumably there's some kind of guide as to maybe reading the books in a particular order or sections thereof. Um, so yeah, looking forward to just kind of finding out how that works. Um, crossings, looking forward to finding out what, what is being crossed and things like that. Um, and it looks like the action takes place in, you know, I can see the Eiffel Tower on the cover, so I want to say Paris, France, um, Baudelaire is mentioned, so, uh, and Paris on the eve of uh, the Nazi occupation, so, yeah, it looks like a little French historical fiction with a bit of a literary twist, something metatextual going on, so, yeah, very excited overall. Um, I do love you a metatext. I love me a metatext, <laughs> so, yeah, good, good stuff. Um, so, yeah, that is my book haul and, and an extra book, so. Yeah. Well, and that extra book brings me to my second point, that it is also Cozy Reading Night! Yes! Yay. The, Thank you, Lauren, Lauren and the books. The coziest. So, we have to do our TBRs. So, my TBR overlaps with the Rory Gilmore 24-hour readathon TBR. So, I've already finished Paddington's Finest Hour. You saw me start that last night. I finished it this morning. It was okay which it hurts me to say, because I love Paddington so much. Mm. I felt, how did I describe it to you earlier? I felt that... Usually, what he did with structure is different, I think. Right. Yeah. Usually in each Paddington book, each chapter is, can be its own short story, but they all tie together in some sort of overarching theme or story arc. And there really wasn't that this time. It really was more like a chapter book, mm. such that I'd be waiting for the punchline in some stories and there just wouldn't be one. It was all filler or explanation. Mm. That was just disappointing. But at the same time, some of them were quite cute and there were a lot of... the. He has the Brown family reminisce about Paddington's earlier adventures from mm. the early stories, and considering this was the last book that he wrote before he died, that's quite sweet and quite touching to read. But then others I found rather frightening, like Paddington's interactions with the police weren't entirely funny, especially in light of everything that's been going on during and since this book was written in 2017. So yeah, it was it was interesting. I'm glad I have it. Round out the series, but meh. So for Cozy Reading Night itself, my first job is to finish The Code of the Worcesters by P.G. Woodhouse. Good stuff. Which is going pretty well. I've got about that much to go, so not far. It does cover, I wasn't sure which stories this covered when I went into it. I know that it's, this specific book is on the Rory Gilmore reading list. So okay. I pulled that one out and said, okay, I will read this one. Nice. I thought it was the first one. Apparently it's number seven. But there we are. <laughs> Wait, so have you read the first one? So you no, read I don't think one. I have. Gotcha. Okay. I've read them all out of order, which that's uh, the okay. brilliant yeah. thing about Woodhouse is that you can read them out of order. Yep. And it doesn't make a huge difference. He does expect that some people might pick them up out of order. And actually okay. has Bertie be aware of that oh. as he's telling the story. Clever. Okay. So for those of you who 
might not have you know met my, these characters before, it's always difficult to know you know how much explanation one should give one's readers. Yes. But you know, here here is my friend Gussie Finknovel in a nutshell, <laughs> and, and goes off. Um, this turns out to encapsulate one, if not a couple, of my favorite episodes. Because there are a lot of different plot lines going on, and I feel like it would be a lot to fit into an hour program, mm. so I can't quite remember if they split the, some of these plot lines up into different episodes. But it does en encompass a lot of them, which is quite fun. But at other times, when I was quite, when I was feeling a little bit unmotivated to keep reading, knowing what was coming in the plot didn't really help. Mm. So bit of a mixed bag, but I'm excited to have read another one. Then hopefully I'll be moving into Beloved by Toni Morrison, which I know very little about what's actually going to be in the plot, and I kind of like it that way. I know that it involves slavery and a mother-daughter relationship, mm. and that Toni Morrison is incredibly highly thought of. I do like her as a writer. I think she's brilliant, having read The Bluest Eye last month. So yeah, so I'm excited to see where it goes. And it's fairly short, so I may even finish that one tonight. Which means I will have read three books for the readathon, so hooray! Excellent! If I have time, I doubt it, but if I have time I might get to Funny Girl by Nick Hornby, which is not on the Rory Gilmore reading list, but High Fidelity is. I don't happen to have High Fidelity on mm. me. But it's another Nick Hornby, so I figure this will be a good substitute. Again, I know relatively little about the plot, but I have a vague idea of Nick Hornby's style, so I'm, I'm interested to see what I think of his style, and if how I imagine his style is actually his style. That was a very confusing explanation, but there you are. <laughs> no, it's good. And Jonathan, for these three hours, you will be reading... Yeah, so I'm basically kind of like I introduced earlier. I'm really just going to be focusing on uh, the letters of J.R.R. Tolkien, which I'm really excited about, uh, because it's a collection of letters. Uh, you know, everyone is a little bit different, so, uh, you know, it's not like there's some kind of continuous narrative that is sustaining like everyone has its own little gem in terms of what uh J.R.R. Tolkien was thinking what he was experiencing how his writing paralleled events going on in his life at the time uh as well as in uh England and Europe more broadly um a couple of the really interesting things I have found out going on in this book is number one he's mentioned like two disastrous Christmases in a row which just I feel so bad for the guy that just these Christmases were just these catastrophic events for some what reason. Um, he doesn't specify. He just he's in, in letters to his editors. He's just like, um, or you know, to a couple of his friends, just be like, you know, something, 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 something. You know, had the disaster of a Christmas. Something, something. Can't wait for the school year to start. And it's like, oh, sir, I'm so sorry. Your holiday did not go as would have been ideal. <laughs> um, so that's kind of funny because you know, clearly, you know, no one, no one died from that, from what mm -hmm. I can tell. So you know, just you know, didn't go well. So, uh, you know, holiday better than J.R.R. Tolkien, apparently. Um, so there's that. Um, that and he was really quite... So that's thing number one. Thing number two is um, he was really quite... Um, uh, what's the term I'm looking for? I want to say I was kind of sensitive about his illustrations for, like, The Hobbit and such, which I forgot, slash, maybe I never even really knew that he provided original illustrations for oh. The Hobbit when it was first published. That's been really cool to find out. So actually, a good chunk of the letters, that, and I'm not far at all, I have so much to go because I'm really taking my time with this, um, but a good number of the letters that have been reviewed thus far are letters with the original editors of The Hobbits who are kind of negotiating with him about... Uh, looking into publishing what's going to become the Lord of the Rings mm -hmm. um, and a lot of them he's talking about the illustrations and how he's like oh I know that I'm not quite good but hopefully this will be good enough for you know this edition um, and it's really funny because clearly they were good enough because the publisher went ahead with them so mm -hmm. it's just like you know dude like you know believe in yourself a bit uh, so that's just been really funny to kind of uh, encounter and I guess if memory serves one of the last letters I read was uh, someone else, uh, a different artist was hired by I think an American publishing company because they're talking about how they're going to get The Hobbit published in America or doing a new edition, something like that. And um, 
uh, humorously enough, I, the, another artist was hired to do an illustration he saw and he basically just kind of trashes it in the letter. Um, and it's like they don't know what's going on and you know they're not doing a good job. So yeah, just a lot of his character and personality are really coming through this, which is really just cool to see. Um, so yeah, it's just a very, very cozy read for me. So excited to just mainly focus on this and maybe dip into the book haul reads, but we'll see. We'll see. I feel like reading this book is very healing for you as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's, it's, it's very, it's, I mean, Lord of the Rings, as you know, it's just, it, it was a, I encountered it in middle school or high school, I forget exactly which, you know, uh, in time for the movies to come out. Um, so I have very homey, nostalgic feelings towards mm -hmm. them and, um, you know, encountering J.R. Tolkien, I find is always rewarding. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he's a very positive figure. His his intentions as a, as a writer are really good. I mean, I feel like you encounter writers who are very kind of tortured about their work and, you know, or have very messy lives, you know, which, you know, it, it happens and, you know, everyone's life is different, but, you know, him, it's, it's, it's such an extension of who he is. Um, and that hominess that you encounter in The Lord of the Rings, especially in The Shire and The Hobbits, mm -hmm. you really encounter in him as a person and as like, you know, this, this professor and this, this dawn of, of letters and stuff like that. So yeah, it's uh, I would agree with that assessment 100%. So, Yay. so thank you for this gift. Of it's course, uh, you're dividends. It's it's so great so far. Yay, I'm yeah. so excited. So, we'll check in a bit once we've gotten cozy. I'll Absolutely. show you some snapshots of how the night goes. <laughs> and welcome to the end of the vlog. It is now Sunday morning. I apologize. I kind of left off filming last night. We did read for a while and I didn't even film dessert and tea that we had. We finished off that same chocolate cake that you saw on the Friday night. It was fabulous. And then we just got chatting and laughing and down YouTube rabbit holes as we tend to do. And then it was 11 o'clock and I just wanted to go to bed. So here I am telling you what I managed to read. So last night I did manage to finish The Code of the Worcesters by P.G. Woodhouse. It was still sweet and funny and fabulous as all of Woodhouse's books are. I realize I never actually mentioned what this is about. So if you've heard of Jeeves, yes, Jeeves as in Ask Jeeves the Old Search Engine, or Jeeves and Worcester. This series was created by P.G. Woodhouse in, well, I'm not sure when he wrote it, but it takes place in the 1920s or the 1930s, and follows Bertie Worcester, who's a young gentleman, very rich, but not terribly bright, and without a lot to do. And he always manages to get himself accidentally engaged to some woman to whom he does not want to be engaged. Or one of his two aunts embroil him in a variety of terrible circumstances on their behalf. And it's up to his very intelligent butler, Jeeves, to get him out of whatever scrape he's in. So this encompassed some of my favorite episodes from the television series starring Stephen Fry and Hugh Laurie. It encompassed the episode with the cow creamer, with his friend Gussie Finknottle's notebook of insults, and all sorts of other hijinks that Bertie tends to get up to when he is visiting Totley Towers. It was quite fun, it was quite enjoyable, and highly recommend. I then started on Toni Morrison's Beloved, I only got about 50 pages in, and I'm of two minds about it. What part of me wants to keep pushing through, because Toni Morrison is an incredible author, 
and this book won the Nobel Prize for Literature, and it is a really important story to be told. It's a story about former slaves and both how they're living now and what their life was like previously on the plantation called Sweet Home. And it centers around this one mother's loss of one of her daughters, whose headstone simply reads, Beloved. So based on that premise, I want to love this book so much because it sounds so amazing and Toni Morrison is a wonderful writer, but I'm not really enjoying it. It's told in a very strange fashion where you're flipping back and forth between the present and the past, which ordinarily doesn't trouble me, but there's no clear delineation of which time period we're in. So it's very hard to keep track of the plot and learn about the characters at the same time with unclear time switches mixed in as well. So part of me wants to push through and the other part of me says life is too short to keep plowing through the rest of a book that you're not enjoying. So, but the other part of me goes, but this is so highly thought of, maybe it's going to get better. So if you've read Beloved, please let me know what I should do, because I'm really stuck at the moment. I may move on to something else in the meantime, but I'll hang on to it just in case you persuade me that I should come back and give it another chance. But that is all I managed to read last night, so that means I did not get to Funny Girl by Nick Hornby, but it will go back on my TBR stack and hopefully I will read it at some point in the future. But that also means I read three books for the Rory Gilmore 24 hour readathon. Well, two and a half, but who's counting? So the lovely creators of the Rory Gilmore 24 hour readathon created a bingo card for us to fill out uh, with various Gilmore Girls related challenges. So I will insert a photo of all of the challenges that I managed to complete between yesterday and Friday night and today. And thank you again to Kira's Corner, to Carolyn Marie Reads, and to Lauren and the Books for creating both of the readathons that I participated in. Since this is the end of the month, I will see you soon in my wrap-ups, book hauls, and TBRs. And until then, be safe, be well, and happy reading. Bye everyone.